So I had a look at the replay and there are definitely things that that uh, need to be said. Let's put it that way. Okay. Fair so, enough. So I like to moving doing this. The level one board. By the way, uh, how often have you been? Uh, trying to every game. Uh, uh, how often I, have you died doing this? Uh, if I see anyone, I back off. So I haven't died doing it, but sometimes I don't get the word down there. Yeah. The important thing here is that, especially if the support ha can have like a CC at level one, then it's a little bit dangerous to walk over here. So what I usually do is I walk through here, then through here, and then kind of like going through here, I put this down. So to kind of like keep more distance. But <clears throat> if anything has like a Morgana or like hook champion, I just don't do this entire thing like if there's anybody in here who can see me and kill me i just don't do this i think it's too risky so be a okay. little bit mindful of that like i said like i said last time i think uh your safety is always more important than the vision that you can put down you know it uh, applies to this as well so be a little bit careful when doing this when there's somebody who can have a uh, level one cc in this game they can't really kill you so in this game is fine but just for the future be a little bit careful with it in that case if they do have somebody who has level one cc then you put it like over here in the middle bush. Okay. So you swap it over. Thing. By the way, this sweep, for the future reference, this sweep doesn't actually do anything. Like, it gives you some XP, but it doesn't really matter. You want to save the rock lanes for for the bush control in the lane. Just... Oh, okay. Yeah, because like getting this board doesn't do anything because they they can already see it, see the buff spawning. They can see you there. They already know. That he's starting, so it doesn't actually make any difference. Oh, okay. Okay, so now we can see the see the Belveth in uh, Raptors because of the ward. And with this, if he moves around here, then we know uh, Belveth is doing this and then maybe comes to bot lane. But more likely, she's gonna go through here, go to her stop side. I don't think I told you this last time, but um, if the enemy jungler starts bot side. Then the next time that you need to worry about them being around bot side is somewhere around 4.15. Maybe actually a little bit longer. Maybe like 4.30 because this is bronze. By that time, if they have done full clear, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and base and nothing else happens. They've already pressed B, uh, press B and coming back to lane, going back to their uh, first spawn, which is the golems. This should happen around 4, 4.15 or so. But again, because this is lower armor games, then this is probably, probably like, longer. Yeah. Yeah, like plus 20, 30 seconds or so. So this is a neat little thing that you can always keep your uh, keep your mind on, so you don't have to worry about the enemy genre being there for like until around this time, so you know that you can play aggro. Unless unless the enemy team has a champion who can do like one, two, three, and then come to come to bot lane. But if that does happen. Let's say that the NAT has like a, I don't know, Jarvan or something. He does one, two, three, comes to bot lane. If you die to this gank, what you can actually do is, because you're for home guards, you can actually run straight to his top side with your jungler, and you're going to be at his blue buff at about the same time as he is, or even even sooner. So now you have 182 on on, uh, on the enemy blue buff, so you can just kill him on his blue. And if you do this, then Ginner gets, or your jungler gets all the camps, and then even though the enemy jungler got first body in bot lane, you, he's completely off the game. So that's one thing you can do to uh, to punish like three camp cheesers that come to bot lane. Okay. But for that to work, you need to get your jungler to be on board with you, to come with you. So be, be yeah. mindful of that as well. Okay, well, going back into the actual lane. Yeah. I like these two autos. Pushes the wave, but he doesn't use the execute sacks. That's good. And at this point, it's obvious that we are going to hit level 2 first. Yeah, we hit them. You guess the 4th auto, that's nice. Next to 1 minute, that's fine. If you're being really nitpicky about this, then you should not be auto- uh, You should not order this one, you should wait for this one to get low and then uh, then execute it. But this is still fine, like this is okay. Go about it. Just the Q, we hit level 2. Uh, this is the first problem that I actually have with this. Is that we already hit level 2 and we do this little back step. We should be walking forward. Because like the instant you hit level 2, you want to fight. Yeah. And I was a little slow on this level up. I remember this and I was like, fuck. <laughs> okay, well, at least you figured it out. Because this is really... Yeah. Yeah, like, look at how 
unbelievably dis disrespectful this guy says. And you also saw that the, uh, Karma used his uh, RQ. Yeah. This is a free kill or at least like two summoners in, in on my screen right here. Yeah. yeah. Is that you should already be thinking about the minions and you should always be ready when you hit level 2 to already go on them. Because this, this kind of looks like you're having a lag or something. But you do end up, end up eventually finding the all -in. The problem with this, which is by the way, this is something that you do the uh, do a lot in this replay, is that you don't walk up to play first. Pretty much every single time you can, you should walk up to play first. Okay. Instead of throwing out your Q first. Because what, ha what happens here, let's say that you go walk up and you get the flame. Okay. Walk up, mm -hmm. you get the flame. Now, because of the slow of the flay and also your glacial augment, like slow race, the Kaiser basically has to flash away from you. So, mm -hmm. no matter what happens, that's a free flash. And then, because you still have your Q after uh, after the flash, you can still Q afterwards and then you hit it. Then, if you hit it, then it's a kill. Mm -hmm. So, by doing this, you always get the flash, no matter what. And then you can even get the kill if you hit the hook afterwards. If you miss the hook, then that's fine. But the problem is that if you hook first, you might miss. They might already be too far away, as they are right now. Like, a lot of things that can just go wrong. That you just miss out on kills because of that. Which is, which is what happens here. Uh, pretty unfortunate yeah. that you guys are focusing the wrong targets as well. Or uh, you guys are focusing the different targets as well. Whereas if you had walked up to Faisal right here, then he knows to hit, hit this guy. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, the level yeah. 2 looks a lot better than last time. Yeah, this, like, was really frustrating. I was like, man, if I had stayed for, like, one more auto, she'd probably be dead. Yeah, that too. And then here, the Kaisa, you could have, you, yeah, you could do the same thing. Look at how disrespectful the Kaisa is. Mm -hmm. He's walking up to you when he support, he support is this low HP. You can literally just sit in the bush, and then if he walks up at you at all, you walk up and flay, and then you just wait for him to flash, mm -hmm. or if he doesn't flash, then you just hook, and then he either flashes or he dies. Yeah, like here, mm -hmm. yeah, like, this is, this, this is a good move. Then now you just sit on here, and if the Kaiser walks over this line, you walk like this, and then you cut him off, and the Kaiser can't do anything. He has to flash away from this. Yeah, like here for example. Yeah, just walk up instead of throwing the Q first. Because the Kaiser is already in range of your of your play. Uh it's a little bit weird. Why are we so far back. Yeah. I guess you don't have... You do have your hook. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure if I should be up so far. I guess I did see uh, yeah, Belveth up here. Yeah. So I, I I guess I should have done that. Yeah. And also remember what I was talking about. If you keep track of where he starts, you know where he's going to be. You don't have to worry about this guy mm -hmm. for like another one and a half minutes, usually. Okay. Like almost one and a half minutes. This battle with uh, Claire is actually uh, like okay, like yeah, he skipped one camp, but he's still around topside. All his camps done at three ten. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you were just paying attention to this, then you would know that the Belveth can't be here, even even if you couldn't see Belveth over topside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one um, one hook on either one of these guys. This guy either has to back or this guy dies if you hit uh, Carl mm -hmm. with your hook. So we should be really looking for a fight here. Also looks like we missed some XP. Okay, we hit the hook. Wait, did you pull twice? I don't think I did. Yeah, because this looks like a one pull to me. Oh no, you did pull twice. Never mind. Okay. Unfortunately, he didn't. He doesn't get the kill. And now we actually know that Belveth should be back towards bot side. Because the last time we saw, yeah. saw Belveth was around here. He's probably back already and now he's going towards Golems. He should be... Belveth should be somewhere around this area. Let's check. I think... Oh, yeah, mind. she was up yeah, here because yeah. I watched the replay again. But I knew she was here because that karma stopped her back. I'm like, that's... That means someone's nearby. Oh, actually... So I backed off. Yeah, uh, she, uh, Belveth was actually trying to get the scuttle but didn't realize that Kino has already taken it. So that's why... He, but that, uh, that's why Belveth is here instead of here. Yeah. 
But we, yeah, we know that Belvit is on both sides. So now we have to be a little bit... A little bit scarish, but not really because we were so far up in HP. Um, I'm not really a fan of this pack. Because if your reasoning is, okay, well, Belvit is both side, then you can still, like, you can stay around here. And then save your lantern for this guy. Because if Belveth comes through here, then you just plant him out and get out. Or you can just sit in, sit in one of these bushes and wait and see if either one of these guys uh, walk up to your hook or something. I just don't like the... Okay. Because the thing is that you're or you're kind of like giving up all of this pressure that we've built up. Okay. Because if we leave, then it it's just like it just gives all all the things that we've done so far. Because now you're just giving them a game, giving them a free reset. Okay. Oh, you actually also go into the dead. When you're playing with future markets, just be really sure that you don't go into dead like this. Okay. Yeah, just always make sure that this do this uh, doesn't go into minus before you leave base, because we just paid uh, extra fifty gold. Okay. And then actually, Beauty truly is. let's have a look at bot lane. Do you need to be going straight back to bot lane here? Probably. Not. Yeah, probably not. Because it looks like any bot lane has already backed. So what mm -hmm. Gino wants to do, Gino wants to uh, push the wave and then back as well. So we actually have about one minute that we don't need to be in bot lane. Mm -hmm. This is like the perfect uh, time to do something else on the map. If, if you can just find it. But uh, going back to bot lane doesn't actually do anything. I think you I go think... back to botlane and then it's just like sit around for like, I don't even know how long. Yeah. Oh, cause... you actually do end up going to botlane. Yeah, when I was leaving base, mid lane was pushed. Like he looked like he was further, so I wasn't like gunning to go there until I saw that the wave started pushing back. Yeah. And if you're really good at uh, look at or good at looking at minion waves, you would actually look at this. And then realize that the, uh, by the next time, or by the time the next wave pushes in, this actually like naturally pushes into your Z. Because, uh, because they both have six minions, full HP minions. But the thing is yeah. that enemy Miklaner's minions are going to reinforce this sooner than the, uh, than Z's. Because all they have to do is for them to get here, but for your Z's minions to do damage to theirs, they have to get all the way through here. So like, by... This time that it takes for these minions to travel, these minions are already doing damage, which means that the lane is going to start pushing into them because uh, because uh, blue side minions do more damage to the red side minions. Okay. So you can actually tell just by looking at this that uh, it's going to push back into your Z in like 30, 40 seconds from now, no matter what happens. Okay. Yeah, you do end up going back uh, going towards me, so like I think, yeah, I, I don't think you get the kill here, but uh, you should definitely get the skill I'd for sure. I, yeah, we didn't get the kill, which kind of frustrated me. And I definitely overstayed here. Like, I shouldn't have stayed as long as I did, I feel like. So when you look at it now, what do you think you should do here? Because this should be a kill. Always. Always should be a kill. Uh, I have my flash up, so I probably should have flash played. You don't even need to flash, flash play here. You just walk up and oh, play. Oh, I guess she was slow. Yeah, and you're already behind her. Where is the Zoe going, gonna go? From this position, yeah. It's really hard for the Zoe to go anyway. He has to go through, or Zoe has to go uh, up here, and then if he, if uh, the Zoe does go towards the upside, then then you can justify a flash play. Okay. But I think I think you're rushing this play a little bit. You can literally just, yes, walk at him. The Zoe doesn't even see you yet. Yeah, should always just. Literally just walk up, play, lantern, and then wait and see what he does before you hook. I think you're too hasty here. Yeah. And also one thing about this is that uh, your flash is really important for the bot lane as well. Because uh, your flash... Basically, any time you get a, get a fight going in this lane, you kill them. So having your flash with you just means that you... Buy, you basically... like Having flash basically means that you have a kill banked in bot lane 2v2. So now that you use it, that flash, uh, that kills just goes away. Like it doesn't exist anymore, unless you get a flash, uh, hex flash on them. Mm. So be be really mindful about using your flash, especially when okay, when you're I'm... playing into AP champions and enchanters and whatnot. 
Okay. Because, yeah, I've been using it more aggressively since our coaching. You were like, no, just fucking yeah. flash yeah, yeah, yeah. on them. Go for it. Yeah. Like, uh, I think that's a good starting point, but there's like this... this how do, I, how do I explain it? Okay. Um. So this is like under using of flash, and this is over using of flash, and then then there's the middle. This is like the like the golden yeah. middle ground. I think before you were like maybe like here, like you were really underplaying it, and then here you're you're being a little bit too more, like too liberal about using it. Okay. So finding this middle is. What I wanted, wanted, what I wanted to, uh, you to do when I thought to use your flash more, because I wanted to like push you a little bit further up, but I think this is a little bit too much. So just, just ask yourself if you need to be using flash for uh, for making plays. I don't think here you needed to, but it is good that you're playing with more intent of using it, so you don't, you don't just like not use it. Yeah, over here in this situation, I think you can just walk up and play. I don't think you need to use the flash here, or at least you can wait until. Until the hat used. But yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate that you don't get the skill. And we also use both of our summoners here. Yeah, and this is just poor playing. Yeah, I definitely stayed there too long. And also, when you look at this, one, one really important thing here is that the Zed has a big wave crashing into him. If you want to do anything in both in mid lane, you sit around here or here and make sure that the Zed just get the, gets the farm. Because, okay. because the farm that he misses here, because of this of this death, he misses, let's see how many minions worth of XP he loses. Yeah, he loses uh, 6 minions plus cannon. Which is so much. Yeah. Actually, a little bit. Yeah, he misses 6 plus cannon. So now he's on half a level on the, on the Zoe. If your Jin, I just realized that your Jin has little tempo for some reason. I don't know why. But if your Jin was a little bit more healthy, I think this would be a pretty good opportunity to just walk over here, hex flash over the wall, and then look for a fight. If you had, uh, if you have your ignite, I'm pretty sure you could maybe still win this. If there's anything, you just, yeah, you could definitely probably win this. Looking at the items here. I think you actually get a yeah you get a fight going. So the problem with this is now you're hitting the uh, the wrong target. That's all that goes wrong here. Because if you hit the hit the Kaisa, then this is good. But because you don't, you lose this fight. Okay. Because the Kaisa gets to do full damage to the Jin, right? Because if you kill the mm -hmm. Kaisa, you're just or you're you're killing you're um, killing the Karma. The Kaisa gets to do all of her damage on the Jin, and then he uh, the Jin dies anyway. And because Jin dies, but Karma dies, or like you trade one for one, even if you were to trade one for one here, uh, Karma dies and Jin dies. The problem is that now the Kaiser gets to push the wave in, and the Jin is going to miss all the XP again. All the golden XP is gone. So trading one for one here is like never worth it. If you trade one for one, that you die, but then it's enemy player or enemy uh, ADC also dies, then that's worth. If it's the other way around, experience is never worth, unless if the support has like a big shutdown, like 300 gold or more. Yeah, you don't even trade off. By the way, this is a. Uh, this also doesn't go so well because you don't have ignite and armor does have ignite. Yeah. Because of uh, of what happened in mid lane. I don't actually mind this one. This hook. Looking for the hook is fine. And then once it misses, I think we just drop the lantern and try to leave. Okay. It's kind of just you you uh, you gave it a try and then it didn't work out. You just get out. It's fine. Oh, it turns out pretty well. And now Kaiser has Nuka uh, Rain to triple uh, Longsword and Boots. But anything yeah. is a little bit 
stronger than in a 2v2. And you also don't have Ignite. What do you think? Uh, if you start a fight right now on the Kaiser, do you win? Sure, we have the bigger wave, but I don't think we win. Yeah. At this point, I would say that you don't win 2v2 until you have your level 6 and until you have your Ignite. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, I think, last time we I talked about like this, right? The two power power scales. Can mm -hmm. I talk about this? Yeah. Okay. So basically, the enemy bot lanes power uh, or like power load is somewhere over here, and without your ult and without your ignite, your power load is probably like somewhere over here. Like there's like no chance that the gap is so big. But once you get uh, get your ignite and your ult, it goes up to like here. Yeah. It's still pretty close, but like you just meet up like this is such a huge difference. Mm hmm. But they, it's, it's important that if you try to fight in this situation right now, then you wait until your your ultimate is up, ultimate is up and you wait until your ignite is up. And then you have to kill the Kaiser first. But 2v2 okay. right now, you're not gonna win. Yeah. Let's actually have a look at this. How did this... Of your damage. You could, I'm pretty sure you could have played him into the W there. I mean, I know, I know it's a little bit difficult, but uh, you could definitely play him into the W there. Yeah, but the, the, one of the reasons why this goes so bad is because you went in before you, you like yeah, you took a lot of damage at the beginning, and then you also weren't level six at the at the start, so you couldn't get the damage on him. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. It, also, you didn't have your ignite quite yet. Yeah, like you were five seconds off from getting this kill. Literally five seconds. Yeah. Yeah, you get your level six, you get your ignite. I'm pretty sure this is a kill. Mm -hmm. At least we got out without dying, so that's fine. Is that every single time you use, use your big abilities, then your power skills goes down by? By a lot so you better make sure that you get something out of using these important abilities or using these important mm -hmm. cooldowns you know just doing this and then figuring out if it works or not that's the only way that you can figure out if it if it's gonna work out or not i think you get the yeah you get the mvp ward here that's good i think nothing really happens for quite a while when I pause the game and look at the map, look at the stats, uh, what do you think the game, game plan is here? No, that's why I was like kind of trying to. I was like, do I go with the gin? I'm just gonna like put this deep ward in. Everyone's losing. Um, let's see. I don't remember where Dragon Timer was at. Um, either. It's uh, they just took it, yeah, like five minutes. Okay. So I was like really not sure. So I'm like, I think I'll go back to lane. But like, it felt like there really wasn't, I wasn't sure. Okay. I have a rule of solo queue. Like, I have a set of rules. I should probably write them up sometime. But one of the rules is you play with who's strong on your team and you avoid who's strong on the enemy team. So with that okay. in mind, because like, uh, actually let me explain why. If you go to top lane and try to 2v2 the set with your uh, with your Nasus, the set just 1v2 is you, right? Mm -hmm. The Nasus is really weak, so you don't want to play with this guy. Same thing with Zed. Zed... I'm not sure if he even has enough damage to kill this guy, even if he hit your hook. If he hit all of your stuff and said he's all of his stuff, then yeah, you can probably kill the, kill the Zoe. But there's a lot of things that could go wrong here, and if uh, if the Zed gets hit by the bubble, then Zoe also wanted to use you. So going to mid lane is a no-go. Bot lane. Bot lane, you guys are doing fine. You're about equal, but that doesn't win the game. Jin is not a champion that wins the game. If this was a Vayne or... Maybe like a Kog'Maw, Jinx, something like this, something with, with like a huge late game, 
Maybe you're gonna mm. maybe you're gonna justif justify staying in bot lane and making sure that this guy just gets to farm. The only mm -hmm. option you have, in my opinion, is is for the next five minutes or so. Uh, the only option that you really have is the kindred, because your kindred is level nine. He's also up a level on the enemy battle wave. She uh she has farmed pretty well, and she also has has a kill. So I think right now your kindred is by far the strongest champion you have on uh, on your team. So if you want to play aggressively and try to get control of the game right now, then you will try to play with the Kindred. Mm -hmm. Whenever possible. Like, you don't just, like, completely abandon everything and just play with the Kindred. That doesn't really work. But that should be the plan here. You want to be playing with the Kindred whenever you can. You try to play with the Kindred when you can, and then try to mitigate the amount of damage that these guys are going to go through. You're okay. kind of, like, trying to glue... Or trying to be the glue, you're trying to be the quick flick, quick fix for uh, these lanes. Try to keep them safe if you can. And then, but you're the only guy who you want to be playing aggressively with is the Kindred. That should be the that should be the mindset. Kindred is the only one who can carry this game right now. And then if you can somehow get the Kindred fed enough, it can kind of act like a, like a bridge. It's like Kindred, uh, Kindred is fed. And then because of the game extending, some of these guys might come back into the game. And then they're useful. So you can kind of like, well, use the Kindred as a bridge to make this guy strong mm -hmm. again. Like okay. give them time to play the game. Mm -hmm. But uh, this situation is pretty bad. Your top lane is getting crushed, your mid lane is getting, uh, getting crushed. Which usually usually means that your chances of winning this game, if both of your soul lanes are getting destroyed like this, probably somewhere in the realm of 30, 35%. I wouldn't give it 40. If you're uh, as... as um, good as the NA team. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I should have stayed here, because nope. I saw that like Jin was going back to lane. I was like, maybe I can trade a kill if they try and dive me, okay. and I don't think I did. Okay, here's a rule for uh, for protect protecting yourself against tower, tower dice. The tower should be seen as one extra champion. Okay. At least until like 20 minutes or so when people have like two or three items. Okay. But when people are only on like one item, the tower is about the same value as one champion. So then you ask yourself, if anything has three champions and I'm alone with a tower, then it's a 3v2. You win 3v2? Probably not. If it was you and Jim are under here, then it's a 3v3. They cannot. It's actually okay. a little bit higher. Maybe like one and a half champions or so at this point. The earlier, the game, mm -hmm. the earlier uh, in the game, the more powerful towers are. Gotcha. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's a pretty good rule. If um yeah, just just count count your tower as like one, one and a half extra champions. And then you can have a pretty good idea of can you stay here or not. But yeah, you cannot stay here for sure. Unfortunately he also doesn't get killed. You could have just waited until uh Jin came. Because if you wanted to bait this, you can literally just wait over here. Mm -hmm. And then just see what happens. Because if they all start hitting the tower, you can kind of like walk up. If the Jin is over here, you can start to walk up and then Jin is already in range of your stuff. So now you kind of like okay. make them, trick them into thinking that it's a 3e1, but it's actually a 3e2. Gotcha. If you just time this out a little bit better, you wait outside of here somewhere, like five more seconds and then walk into the tower, this might go well. But yeah, staying, uh, staying alone here is no good. Yeah, unfortunately, he just he doesn't get the kill. Well, Shut down. I think you go for a flash hook here. Yeah, this flash hook I like because at this point your flash is actually okay. Yeah, uh, your flash is a lot less valuable than the Zoe flash, and Zoe has a big flash shutdown. So if you hit this hook, it's always worth the flash there. If he doesn't have flash and you hit this hook, it's really good. It's uh, really worth there because the Zoe is level eleven. Everybody around there is like level nine, level ten. You get a ton of XP for uh, killing the Zoe, killing the Zoe there. So I I like that you went for that play. I uh, I really like that. Went for it confidently. That's good. Okay. So if we had made up our mind. 
to play with the Kindred. By the way, Kindred is even more even further ahead now. Yeah, Kindred is like really bad. Even though you look at it and go, oh, he's one and ten or one and one. So you might think that Kindred is not strong. But the thing is that the Kindred has highest farm in the game, level 10, pretty strong. So if you had okay. made up our mind that okay, we're gonna play with the Kindred, then once we see the set walking up here, this is a 183. Play the set here. Might get you a couple more extra waves, it might get you some pressure to water on top side. It also extends the game time because now the NAT has to play at 45 for like one minute or so until uh Seth can actually get on the map, which gives these guys more time to just you know farm and get back into the game. Because yeah, when I'm losing games like this, I'm like, I'm not sure what the game plan is. I just went mid because there was no one pushing it and there was no one picking up that XP. Yeah. And I like, I, I just didn't know what to do because I was like, I feel like, I felt like I couldn't like make plays because like I had kept trying to and they just weren't working out. Yeah. And I wasn't sure what to do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, going to mid lane is also fine. Just going to collecting the XP is fine because they end up uh, what we doing. But yeah, like that, that could be the plan. You just play with the Kinred over there. They yeah, are going to mid lane is okay. also not incorrect. Okay. Because there's nobody here. But uh, how you usually play when you're playing uh, from behind is you try to get some kind of vision control, like somewhere. It could be uh, if, if you're losing and the tower is gone, you usually want to put it somewhere inside your uh, inside your jungle, so you can maybe create picks like uh, they like they do around top side, or you just play okay. play for vision like on one side of the map, and then just pl try to make play plays with it. Because last time I think I, I talked to you about this four course nothing. Because if you have what like this side warded, then we can pre be, we can basically tell how many people are on this side. Because if you can see one over here and then John is over here, then we can probably guess that there's okay. Well, mid lane is probably over here. There's probably two people around top side. So we can mm -hmm. we just kind of like cutting on our head, cutting on our heads how many people are uh, are where on the map, and then try to either make plays or or uh, defend. Their, uh, their attacks on our sides. Because right now what you're trying to do is you, you're basically waiting until 20 minutes to maybe get a catch somewhere on here. Maybe like, maybe get like a, I don't know, 4v2 on top side and then try to go for a Baron or something. Like you're kind of trying to play aggressively in a way that doesn't make you fall too much further behind. Because right, I mean right now you guys are kind of in desperation mode because you guys are really far behind. So I, I would prefer you be a little bit more on the aggressive side than on the defensive side. But that should be the plan. Yeah, like like by the way, notice the first time or first time that you play with the Kindred, something good happens. This is the first time that you play with the Kindred this entire game, and then we we get a couple of kills and uh push around the top side. Yeah, we get a get a mid lane tower for it as well. Yeah, so it's like two plays with the Kindred and we are up. We're up by like uh, 3,000 gold. Almost. Okay. Yeah, we get a shutdown, we get a herald, we get mid lane tower. Jin gets to farm both lane. This all happens because because we are uh, playing with we play with the kindred. But I think uh, you, I think over here is when. Probably not game over, but this is a this is a pretty big mistake because you just got yourself out of the hole, and now you're digging yourself back into it. Like you're, you're just you're just you just can't wait to hop back into the hole. Okay. By doing this, because the thing is, yes, the dragon is spawning, but when you look at this, half HP, less than half HP, a little bit over HP, uh, half HP, then you press that. I mean, I, you couldn't see this. I don't have. Yeah, I don't have ult for this one. Yeah, three uh, ults missing. And then because you you just made this player on top side, and people haven't been back in for a while, you got a couple of kills on the set. You got this. You got that. You got that. You should know that pretty much everybody is on a ton of gold. Look at all the gold that we have in our, on our inventories. Okay. Four thousand five. Yeah, this is like six thousand gold that you have in your inventories. Mm -hmm. And you're half HP, no ultimates. So you're actually in a pretty good situation right now. The problem is that you kind of just sit around, and also this is a 45. 
We know this is a 45 because Nasus is not nowhere to be seen. Even if he TPs, it doesn't matter. But the, the enemy set is also here. So we can probably assume that the entire enemy team is here. While we only have four people here and your kindred ran off. I think this is probably... You guys had a big comeback by, by making this place. But this is kind of screws us over so hard. Yeah. Yeah, because we go there, we then it, we give the enemy team a couple more kills. They get a shutdown. Kindred dies. Velvet gets a couple of more extra kills. They get dragon. We were even in gold, and just look at, yeah, we're down three three k again. Yeah, and then I think I really fudged this next one. Uh, so I was like, oh, Baron's spawning soon. I know they went bot side, so I'm gonna go start setting up vision. Yep. Yeah. And then I get caught out here. You know why? Uh, I wasn't like I was pretty far from my team. I know that. Uh, but I didn't. S or no, maybe it wasn't here. But I know I did get caught out this game, warding Baron. Oh, because of the vision that I cleared. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, th in this case, it's it's fine because you know that they're top, they're all bot side. So. Right now, I think you're kind of in, in the right here. Yeah, like I like this. This is what I would have done. Uh, what I would have done is after I get spotted here, I would also drop down this one. I would drop down this one. Then maybe I could drop, just like walk a couple of steps back and then drop down this one and then leave. Okay. Which is kind, yeah, of, kind I... of similar to what you did here. I, yeah. I know I got caught out here later. I thought it was this point, but I didn't. Unfortunately, you don't get the kill. Getting that kill would be so huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I, I overstayed. Yeah, this is a really bad hour stay because remember what I said about playing with who's stronger on your team. Mm -hmm. Your kingdom is on the opposite side of the map, and we also know that the enemy team probably best be our team is here. We can probably assume that the entire enemy team is somewhere over here, mm -hmm. and our strongest champion is nowhere nowhere near. Yeah, this is uh this is a really risky thing. Because if you die here, then anything is insta barons and the game is probably over at that yeah. point. So this is a really risky thing to do. Gotcha. Yeah. So be really mindful about not ever getting caught here when you have when uh Baron is up. Mm -hmm. Because uh last time I told you that Baron is the best best comeback mechanic in the game, it's also the easiest one to take. Because like one bad mistake mm -hmm. from either one one either team around top side usually leads to Baron. And then Baron is just a huge swing tempo. So be really careful when um, when you're around this area, when Baron is up. This is also a bit risky. Yeah, you should die here, probably. Actually, let me check. Okay, so we see the Karma. Okay, never mind. Yeah, never mind. We can see... Yeah, we can see the set that we, we can see the Zoe. So it's probably unlikely that we die here because we have Flash. Yeah. Is that if the Karma and Bell and uh, Kaisa are there, then it, it could be a little bit dangerous. Is it the Lantern push? Okay, yeah, this is not your fault. Yeah, uh, he should have just taken the Lantern and got it out. Yeah. I wasn't sure if I, like, didn't throw it close enough to him, because I feel like people don't ever click on it unless it's, like, right on top of them. Yeah. What you can do, though, is that you can. Throw it in the direction that they're running into. Because if you throw it here, then number one, they're looking at here probably. They don't probably even see this. And then if they even if they do see it, even though they can just dash to you, it's still like putting them closer than anything, which is something that people mm -hmm. don't like to do. But if you throw it here instead, I'm pretty sure he would click it. Or at least he would see it more likely. Maybe not, but mm -hmm. just a just a little tip. Just throw it where they're running. Okay. But yeah, you should have just taken it out. Taken it and got it out. That's not your fault. He, de he definitely had uh, the chance to take it. Let's get out. Okay. Just are destroying the uh, destroying bot side. I think right now this is probably the best chance we had at uh, coming back in this game. 
Because uh, right around, around top side is the one pick that I've that I've been talking about. One pick around top side usually leads to Baron. And with your mm -hmm. keynote going towards top side. I think uh, once I see the set, I would just be line straight to okay. it, if the Kinro to come. If the Kinro doesn't come, then you don't go for the play. But if he does come, then you can probably kill him, and then you can usually turn it into the Baron. Yeah, I probably should have. Okay, yeah, and then... I think after this, the game is probably just over, yeah. Yeah, after Kindred gets caught there, and you guys lose the inhibitor, you lose Baron, you lose Dragon. I think after this point, game is probably in a state that you can't... ...really defend it from. Yeah. If you got a, if you got a better fight there, then maybe you could still turn into Baron. But I think you lose too much to save this game. Uh, the only only way you lose, uh, or the only way you win at this point, is if the entity makes a disastrous mistake. I think the best uh, best thing that you can still do here is to just stick to the game plan and just play here, and then just hope that you can somehow make a pick around uh, around uh, Baron, which I guess is what you're doing with guys. Okay, there's a random fight going. Okay, the anything is Baron. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think at that point the game is over. So there's probably not too much more to talk about, but yeah. Couple of things over here. You want to use your uh, flame whenever you can without uh, before hooking, because EQ is always more likely to to hit than just throwing out a Q. Okay. And then if you can keep in your mind who you want to play with, that's really important because even now the the Zed and the the Nasus are like, yeah, these guys are non-factors. Mm -hmm. These guys are like wanna have like half champion each, whereas Kino is like two champions. Okay. Just keep in mind who is your win condition and then uh, try to play around them. Try to play. Uh, try to make it so that it's as easy as possible for the, for, uh, for this guy to play, because when uh, support, in my opinion, is you make it as easy for your your teammates to play, but making it as hard for the enemy team to play as possible. I think that's that's the idea of the support role. Is that you're you're kind of like like I said you're kind of the glue that's holding everybody together, but at the same time you're kind of just like throwing wrenches at these guys' plans. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, that's a pretty good way to look at the role, and especially if you're playing Thresh. Because Thresh is Thresh is a champion that's a playmaker, but she he is also like a defensive champion because of the lantern. Thresh mm -hmm. has so much utility in the game. Which is why he he's so so difficult. I think Thresh is like top three hardest champions for this world role, and uh, mm -hmm. the main reason why is because when you think about Janna, Janna usually has like a few options what she can do, maybe like uh, stay in the back, old Q, like whatever. There's not that many options for Janna. Like your position is still really important and so forth. But like when you think about Thresh, you have your Q. Are you gonna mind game it or not? You have your W. Are you gonna? Use your, use your play to um, stop dashes. When do you want to ult? Can I fax flash here? Should I uh, should I ult, ult hook here? Or like a uh, flash hook here? There's just like a million things. Where do you want to go? Uh, who like There's so many things. So many paths to, uh, to choose with the champion. And then picking the right path at the right time is what makes him difficult. Same thing with Bard. Is that the, the, these champions have so many options that picking the right ones are is just what makes the champion hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, there were, like I said, there were things that I liked, liked here. Like, using the flash more aggressively is is something that I definitely like. Uh, especially the flash over here, that was good. Yeah, uh, this game was definitely vulnerable if you just didn't do this. Yeah. Yeah, if you didn't do this and then play with the Kindred, just recognizing that, okay, well, we're not, we're not half HP, or we're like half HP, we have 6k in the bank. Because League of Legends is kind of like just one play at a time. Mm -hmm. You made one play over here and you made one play over here. You're you're overstretching it by making this third uh, third play. It's way too much. Gotcha. Yeah, slow it down. This is something that uh, quite a few people do, by the way. And it's that when it comes to League of Legends, it's just one step at a time. Problem is that 
a lot of people just take the elevator, elevator as they just want to be quick and they just want to be easy. But the problem is that if this, if this elevator is not maintained and these cables cut, then you're just gonna crash down to the earth and die. So yeah. let's not take the elevator. Let's take it okay, one step at a time. That makes sense. Yeah, I definitely like didn't think that all the way through. I was just like, okay, my team's here to back me up if we try to like make a play, but I didn't think like about their tools as much. Yeah, because as I probably should have. Yeah, because if you go back here, then yeah, like it, it should be pretty obvious that five v four. They have their ultimates, we don't have their ultimates, they probably spawn low, like over here. They also spent all of their gold, our probably, while we didn't, our probably spawn low, like over here. It's so obvious mm -hmm. that anything should be a lot stronger than we are in this spot. 